Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I turn this blue box of plastic parts into this modern lit up gas station. So don't go anywhere. As with every kit I build, I read over the instructions, cut the parts off the sprues, sand the pieces, and then paint them. For the walls of the gas station, I want to give them a dirty weathered look. So I try a technique that didn't really work out the way I imagined it would. I used some black paint and watered it down. I then painted the walls and wiped off the paint before it dried. You be the judge. I think in the future I'll just paint the walls and then weather them, instead of skipping right to the weathering step. I always start with a wall no one will see so that I can learn from my mistakes. Exhibit A, Your Honor. Next, I wanted to glue the clear plastic to the window frames using Elmer's Glue All because it dries clear, but then I remembered that I really should paint these frames first. So I did, using this metallic silver paint. Always make sure you paint the correct side. I used a small brush and painted all the door and window frames. Was it the right choice of color? Again, you be the judge. Now I can glue on the fake glass. I just cut out pieces that were slightly larger than the frames and then glued them on. There was some spillage, so make sure you only put a very small amount of glue. There was just enough material, so there isn't much room for error. Time to work on the entrance. I glued the left and right interior brookwork. And then I glued the left and right exterior brookwork. Or was it the right and then left? Make sure you decipher which is which when you do it. Gluing the side doors in place, and in fact all of these small pieces, wasn't that bad. Walters does a good job at creating small tabs on their parts so they fit easily together. Exhibit B, Your Honor. When it comes time to glue the main doors in, just make sure you know which is the top and which is the bottom. Glue the sides and slide it in. Voila. Last part of the entrance was to glue the alcove ceiling in place. Okay, looks good. Let's work on the four walls. I just glued the windows onto the corresponding walls and then glued the four walls together on the base. We're getting there. I wonder how sturdy this is. I was going to try and weather the base like I did the walls, but remember how that turned out? So I went a different route. I used my pale grey paint and painted the whole base. I think I put on about three to four coats. I'm hoping it looks like concrete. Next I dry brushed some black paint onto the areas where there would be a lot of foot traffic. Okay, now for real I glued the four walls to the base. Again, Walters makes this pretty foolproof. Line the tabs up and glue. No guesswork here. Next step was to glue the entrance in place. Put some glue in the wall, attach the entrance, and now it looks like a building. And now it's time to attach a very small security camera above the front doors. And you know me in small pieces. Using tweezers and a lot of patience, I glued the security camera in place. This video clip is only a few seconds long, but trust me, the raw footage is about 6 minutes long. I then installed this electrical panel. But let's take a look at what's beside it. Is that supposed to be a door? It reminds me of that old Simpsons episode. Run! Who we'll hide at my house? <laughs> hey! This emergency exit is painted on! After my experience with the security camera, I took Walter's advice and painted the rest of the small parts on the sprue before cutting them off. I used a neutral gray to paint the hydrometer, which was super easy to install. Find the hole and glue in place. Let's work on the roof. Or the roof. Or as Gucci calls it, the <coughs> I painted both the gas station and the Fueling Island roofs, a neutral grey. Yes, I painted them the exact same colour they came in. That's to eliminate the plastic look. I left the part of the main roof unpainted for this, the entry roof. It comes with its own underside, which I glued to the roof. Or, <coughs> speaking of underside, the main roof comes with one as well. 
very easy to attach. I decided not to paint it white because not enough of it shows to, to matter. Also, I didn't feel like it. Same goes for the feeling on roof. I thought I'd try something different for the roof details. I cut out a piece of skateboarding grip tape to fit the area in the roof. As you can see, I measured once and cut several times. Luckily for me, the hole for the furnace exhaust went right through. So I poked a hole up from the bottom, piercing the grip tape so that I could fit in the exhaust. I white glued all the parts onto the grip tape and decided not to glue the grip tape in place this way it makes it easier to repair the AC unit if need be. Building the fueling island was tricky just because of the small parts, but it was actually kind of fun because it's different and I got to customize it. First I painted the brick column pieces. The kit came with enough for six columns, but I'll only be using three. I did a white wash with white paint and here are the results. Some turned out better than others. What do you think? I painted the caps white and glued everything together. I also painted the entire base neutral gray, which will match my asphalt color on the layout. While that dries, check out this awesome rail fanning video I took a few years ago. <laughs> I bought some bright red paint because I'm turning this gas station into a Petro Canada. Which means I painted the white safety posts, the gas nozzles, the pump covers, and the gray safety posts red. The nozzles were super tiny and I left those on the sprue to paint. I can't imagine this kit in end scale. Here are the red safety posts glued in place. I'll just add a bit of red paint on top of each where I cut from the sprue. For a change of pace, I glued the three brick columns onto the island's base. When it came to the canopy ceiling and supports, they went in quite easily, but as you can see, they do shift. I only glue the outside supports because I have an idea for the middle one. I let the glue dry by hanging the canopy on two bottles of paint. This way the supports would fall straight. I painted the gas pumps white, again to get rid of the plastic look and so that my decals could adhere better. I glued the pump halves together and while the glue was drying, I read over the instructions again. Let's see, parts 51, 52, 53, and 23? Wait, what? Didn't I see 23 on the other page? I did! Sneaky Walters, very sneaky. I cut the holes into three similar strips and then carefully glued them into the small holes underneath the pump covers. While that was drying, I added the pump decals provided in the kit. I created my own Petro Canada decals and applied them as well. To see how I made decals and apply them, check out the video link in the description or the card above. I also glued on the very small nozzles. Did I mention they are very small? I'm glad the kit provided more than I needed because a few broke when I tried to snip them off the sprues. I then glued the pump covers onto the pumps and trimmed the hoses to the correct length. They have to attach to the nozzles which required super glue because the regular glue I use didn't dry fast enough and I did not have the patience to hold the pieces together while it dried. Here is a completed pump with both nozzles in their holsters. This pump will be in use, so I glued the nozzle onto the end of the hose and left it blowing in the wind. Next step, I glued the pumps to the base and I also glued this car to the base so it wouldn't roll around. I only glued one wheel, just in case I have to remove this car. You know, for repairs. Then I glued this HO scale figure to the base. Let's call him... Phil. Ha! Okay, now for the really fun part. Installing lights. I had to find a way to run wires through the island so that I could house four lights in the ceiling. So here's what I did. I bought two packs of square tubing that are hollow, one pack being 1 8 inches and the other being 3 16 inches. One of these will replace the middle support post on the island. As you can see, the 3 16 was a bit too big and the 1 8 was a bit too small. 
I went with the smaller one because it's pretty close to the one in the kit, and I also made sure two sets of wires could fit through the tubing before proceeding. I used these cool white LED stick-on lights from Woodland Scenics. Two lights come in a pack, and they are very bright. If need be, I can dim them down using the Just Plug system. This next step was a little risky, and Woodland Scenics does not recommend you do this. I'm going to use two plugs with four lights. It will keep things tidier, and I'll have more ports open on my hub. First I separated the plug from the light. Then I split the positive and negative wires from each other on the light end and the plug end. Then I patted my dog. He gets nervous when I use sharp tools. And then I very gently stripped the plastic coating off the wires. Then I soldered two lights to one plug. I used some heat shrink to cover the joints. And if you're wondering, yes, I did test this idea before soldering. Now that the lights are ready, it's time to set up the ceiling where these lights will go. I cut the hollow tubing to an appropriate size and placed it loose in its new home. I then trimmed it and glued it in place. I tried my best to keep it straight. Once the glue had dried, I painted everything white. Next I drilled a pilot hole and then a larger hole for the light to sit in. I used a quarter inch spit, which was just a bit too small. I will not be using the stick-on feature of these lights. I almost went out and purchased the next spit size up, but decided to just use my knife to make the hole larger. <coughs> Don't worry Gucci, I was careful. As you can see, perfect fit, nice and snug. If you try this and you don't feel comfortable putting two lights on one plug, you'll still have to cut your wires anyway because the plug is too big to fit through the tubing. I put the first set of lights in place and fed the wires through the hollow post, then through the brick support. Luckily, it's hollow as well, and there is a hole in the base, almost as if Walther is planted that way. Sneaky. All right, there we go. All I need now is a roof, and let's see if the lights work. The moment of truth. Yes! That looks so cool! Oh, I get it. Cool white. Of course. Before I set this up in the layout, I just want to show you a few more things that I did. I added the downspouts. I painted the icebox and added the decals provided. And I painted above the entryway because this is where I'm going to put the Petro Canada logo. With a quick hole drilled in the layout, I fed the wires through and plugged them into my light hub. I'll have to change the roads a little bit to make room for this big structure, and I could add a little more weathering to both the station and the island, but for now, I'm happy with the results. In a few days, I hope to add lights to the station, so stay tuned for that video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.